17 year old special needs student who was arrested for attacking his teacher's aide has been sentenced to five years in prison and 15 years on probation in the state of Florida. This is atrocious and we're going to get into why. We're diving into the case of Brendan Deppa, the 17 year old who attacked his para professional who is also known as a teacher's aide by some. The video went viral. People were horrified to see this giant young man knock down a woman and they just didn't have the whole story. His family discovered that he was hypersensitive to stimulations like sound, light, and certain texture. By the time he was two years old, his family noted that he not only had sensory issues, he also had difficulty in communication and understanding. And of course, they were concerned enough to get him diagnosed and discovered that he was autistic. The family tried to put him into preschool that didn't work. Brandon would go into what is known as a meltdown, which to people who are not familiar with autism, who don't have children with autism in their lives, a meltdown is like a temper tantrum times 10 or more. Anyway, Brandon would be inconsolable. So his family quickly decided that they would homeschool him, which would be an environment that was most comfortable to him, most conducive to learning, no distractions, no triggers. Anyhow, that was going great. They joined homeschooling groups. They took Brendan camping. He was able to interact with other kids. Brendan was really quick to pick up on reading and he read the entire dictionary at a very young age. He has a high vocabulary, but in his talking, he has a, a kind of a flat aspect to his speech. While some people might say, oh, he looks so normal, he actually does sound like he has a disability. Am I going to jail? Yes, you are. For how long? I do not know. I don't make that determination. I don't want to go to jail. Well, look at me. Look at me. I have more important places I, I, un to I, un I understand. As Brendan entered puberty, things got worse. His behavior issues became worse and the family was working with therapists and autism experts. Brendan got other diagnoses as well as the autism. He has oppositional defiance disorder and intermittent explosive disorder. So this is quite a combination when trying to deal with a teen who is growing, having hormones, confused, and his angry outbursts were scary, frankly, to his family. He got put on medications. The medications had the side effect of making him rapidly grow and gain 100 pounds in a year's time. So there's Brendan, now a very large teenager who still had emotional outbursts and temper tantrums. The family consulted the experts who told them that seeing as how Brendan was growing older, they need to start thinking about what happens after high school, what happens when he becomes an adult. So following the advice of the team who told them that they needed to create a paper trail showing that Brendan had special needs and that he was going to need these things in place when he was an adult, they follow the plan of when Brendan would be out of control, they would call it in, call in for a Baker Act, which in Florida is an involuntary commitment of someone who is having a mental health crisis. They called this in on a few occasions. This would bite Brendan in the butt later. Anyhow, they were just trying to do what was best for Brendan, what was best for his future. Brendan also at this time was experiencing bullying in a very disgusting fashion. One particular bully would take a tennis ball, rub it on his privates, and then throw it to Brendan, who would catch it, and then make fun of him, tell him he was grabbing his 
privates. One day, this kid also tried to get Brennan to drink urine. So Brennan reacted and hit the kid. The kid's family pressed charges against Brendan, so there was an assault charge. The bully did not get charged with anything, and only Brendan got in trouble. That went on Brendan's record as an assault. Due to the assault charge, the Baker Act commitments, and Grandma was battling cancer, and the daughter needed brain surgery, so that's a lot of unsettling stuff going on, which is not good for a kid on the spectrum. Anyone who has a kid on the spectrum can tell you kids on the spectrum need routine. They need to uh, have a good idea of what to expect. And so with all this unexpected stuff going on, Brenda was in turmoil. So the family found him a place to stay at an autism center in South Carolina, where they were also going to be working on trying to get his medications right. Medications are complicated. They will have some good things, but then they'll have bad effects. And Brendan was on many medications, including antipsychotic medications, and there were all kinds of unwanted side effects. And so they were hoping to get him off of his medications and then get him on to the right medications. And while this was occurring, this is South Carolina, so the family could only come visit him once a month. And then COVID hit and they weren't able to visit him at all. The family so badly wanted him back. But in 2020, Mr. Deppa had a heart attack and had to be hospitalized for a while. So they still weren't in a position to bring Brendan back home so Brennan had been sent to the facility in South Carolina where he could work on his anger issues and try to get his medications straight. The family expected to only be there a couple months and that then they would take him home. But COVID happened and they weren't even able to visit him. And then there were some crisis in the family. Grandma got cancer. Sister had to have emergency brain surgery. And so they had to go almost a year without seeing Brendan in person. And then they finally got him transferred to a facility that was about two and a half hours from their home there in Florida. This was called ECHO. It's a group home for people on the autism spectrum. And they had high hopes. They were hoping that Brendan would be able to do this and then um, they'd be able to visit and reconnect and bring Brennan home because during this time where due to circumstances beyond their control, they had not been able to be with Brendan. Brendan had, because of his autism and his understanding of things, decided that they had abandoned him. And so he had trust issues, he had abandonment issues on top of all the issues he already had. Brendan's dad had had that heart attack so they were only able to visit Brendan and not really able to take him home at all. Next thing that happens is the group home, Echo, tells the family that Brendan is going to have to go to public school. This is the first time in his life he's going to public school. His parents were very, very concerned because they knew all of Brendan's triggers because he's got oppositional defiance disorder and autism affects the ability to communicate with others. It affects the way you see the world. A misconception with autism is people think that these are people that don't experience joy and things like that, but they do. They can be very loving. Brendan would hug strangers. One time when he was at Walmart and his grandma was buying him a toy that he really wanted, he picked her up and swung her around. And that probably looked pretty strange to the bystanders. Anyhow, whatever he felt, he felt it to the max. So they went through the IEP process and they went through a similar process with Echo where they talked about the structure of Brendan's day and his prized possession, his 
Nintendo Switch, which he had specific hours of the day that he was allowed to be on it, and that if it were to be taken away from him during those times, it would result in a full-on meltdown, which is, like I said, an extreme temper tantrum. And with Brendan being six foot six and 270 pounds, they got a crisis team in place for whenever something like this were to occur. Then with the people from ECHO and with the IEP team, which included the parents, school official, the exceptional student education teacher, a psychologist, I'm not sure exactly how many other team members, but anyhow, definitely team members in place. And they discussed Brendan, his different diagnosis, how they affect him, how they would affect his ability to interact in a school setting. They came up with the IEP, which is an individualized education plan. It's a federal document. Uh, it's something that needs to be followed, but very often it is not any parent who has a special needs child who has gone through this process can tell you there are nightmares, nightmares galore. And this is one of my pet peeves is that there are so many schools that for whatever reason do not follow the IEP or don't honor the IEP and then terrible things happen. Anyhow, in this particular case, Brendan had a new exceptional student educator and completely new to the system, never been a para before, but a para doesn't even need to have any special training or anything. A para is an assistant to the exceptional student educator. She was tasked with accompanying Brendan when he went into his regular classroom class. And apparently she either didn't read the IEP or didn't understand the IEP. Same with the exceptional education teacher. She was new to the job. She wasn't the one who had attended the IEP meeting. There was a clause that said that if he were to be given his electronics, it couldn't be taken away without first conferring with the crisis team and getting the crisis team there for any negative reactions on the part of Brandon. It was not to be used as an incentive for him. There were specific hours of the day when he could have his Nintendo Switch. But unknowns to Brendan's parents, the exceptional education teacher decided that rather than the token economy that had been in place for incentives for Brendan, which would be he'd get a token for good behavior, then use the tokens to go to the snack closet and purchase snacks with the tokens. That was what was on the IEP. The teacher decided that would be really a great incentive would be the use of his switch. So the teacher contacted Echo. Echo was, was a bit wary, but went, oh, okay. And they sent his switch over to the school. And that's where all the trouble began because they started using the switch as his reward. One day, the day in question, Brendan took the switch and the para to a regular education classroom. And there in the regular education classroom, other students were using their cell phones while Brendan was using his switch. And the teacher in that classroom got upset about everyone using their electronics and said something about it. Then Brendan and the para went back to the exceptional education room. And at that time, also against the IEP, which stated that Brendan was not to be talked about in his presence and that any decisions regarding punishments needed to not be stated in front of Brendan until there was a crisis team in place. But right in front of Brendan, the para said to the teacher, Brendan had disrupted the class with his switch and that his switch needed to be taken away. So his switch was taken away. He was extremely upset. He also didn't understand why his switch was being taken because the other kids had their phones. He blew up and 
he blew up at the para as she was the one who said his switch needed to be taken away from him. And he did attack her. This was caught on video. And the video got shared and it went viral, which is very unfortunate because I think that also had a huge impact on what happened to Brendan afterwards. First off, when a kid in exceptional education programs acts out, gets in trouble in any way, they have a manifestation meeting, which is a meeting where the IEP team gathers together and they go over what happened and determine whether this was due to disability or not. If it's due to disability, you don't get expelled and they find some kind of alternative punishment. The manifestation meeting found that Brendan did this due to his disability and they did acknowledge that he has the emotional IQ of a four to six year old, which basically means that when it comes to regulating his emotions, when it comes to navigating situations, he re reacts, his mentality is that of a four to six year old, which has nothing to do with his intelligence regarding, you know, being able to read and things like that. They determined that this was due to his disability and he couldn't help himself. But at the same time, because the teacher had been injured, this also went to the courts. At the time, Brendan was 17 years old and so it went to juvenile court. But for some reason, he ended up getting tried as an adult and they bumped up his charges. Originally, he was being charged as a juvenile and he would be looking at probation house arrest or whatever. He was allowed to be kept at the juvenile detention facility uh, where he was in solitary. And then he got transferred to the jail when he turned 18 years old, where he was also kept in solitary. We get to the courtroom, we get to court, and he pled no contest for these charges. His family spoke about his disabilities, Brendan's psychologist talked about his disabilities, but the prosecution also brought in their own psychologist who gave his opinions. And this was not a jury trial whatsoever. It was just up to the judge. And Judge Perkins has had cases like this before him before. So they were thinking that he was probably going to get probation. But Judge Perkins sentenced Brendan to five years in prison and 15 years of probation. I'm terrified for my child. Prison is a death sentence for him. This was incredible, not only because Brendan is a person with disabilities that precluded him from being in control of himself, but also because Judge Perkins, you know, just a couple of years prior, had ruled on other autistic teens who had assaulted their teachers and they did not get the same punishment whatsoever. One was a girl. She was found incompetent first due to her autism and then they ended up dropping the charges against her. And the other, a male, had actually stabbed his teacher and attacked a couple other staff members. So it was like three counts of assault guess what? He got 18 months of probation and some community service. He got zero jail time. Both these other kids were 18 years old, but not tried as adults or going, going to jail or prison. And both of them were white. Well, Brendan is not. So what's up with Judge Perkins? What is up with this double standard it's not like Brenda did anything different from what these other two kids did. These other two kids also in their meltdown outbursts were swearing at the teachers, were saying that they hated them, were saying that they would kill them. And the young male actually had also told law enforcement that he was going to kill them, that he was going to come back and kill them. Judge Perkins putting so much weight on Brendan's speech just blows me away. There is body cam footage, and when you hear Brennan speak, you can tell that he is not at the level of a of a 17-year-old at all. Am I going to jail for how long? I don't want to go to jail. And Brennan did not really have control of his emotions. 
So he didn't really seem to be grasping the situation. So I'm not sure how come they decided he was competent for one. And for another, what in the heck are they doing sending this kid to prison? Now imagine a four to six year old, but they are six foot six and 270 pounds. There you've got Brendan. It feels like this is actually a death sentence for him. And I am just hoping that there is some way that Judge Perkins can see the light, I guess. Also, I think there need to be changes. And if there are states like Florida do not consider autism to be a defense, I think laws need to be changed. So please comment in the comments below and let me know what you think of all of this and what your experiences are with people with autism. I guess that's it for now. See you in the next video.